All right, so as I was saying, we're going to start 7.3 today, and we're going to talk about how to add and subtract some rational expressions. So basically, just our fractions. So let's get started on that. We're going to add and subtract some rational expressions. You know, just like I did with multiplication and division, I'm going to start us off with some very basic fractions here. So, for instance, let's see how to add 7 thirds plus 2 thirds. First thing, uh, can I add those fractions together? Yeah. What lets me add these fractions together? So that's different than multiplication and division. In multiplication and division, we didn't even have this thing called a, what was it again? The common denominator. We didn't even have that. We didn't need it because we were slashing away numerators and denominators. kind of fun, getting rid of factors. But here we do have to have those common denominators. Uh, you learned this from your pre-algebra class that you have to have that. Um, I won't go into the exact reasons why because you've, you've covered that before. You just know you have to have one, right? And in order for you to add or subtract these fractions, bam, they have to be the same. And if they are the same, well, it's not too bad to add them. What do you do? Okay. Wait a minute, so I don't add the denominators? No, okay, so that stays to be a 3. That's exactly right. So I'm going to add our numerators together, keep the de denominator the same. And then lastly, we're going to do what? Yeah, and this is also a little bit different than what we had with multiplication and division. See, with multiplication and division, you can simplify as you go, right? You can simplify actually kind of in this step. We can't do that with addition. There's nothing to simplify here at all. We can only simplify until, not even here can we simplify, that doesn't even work, because that's connected by addition, but we can't do that. Only until you get to the very last step, after you add everything together, can you simplify. So that's a little bit different also than our, our multiplication division, is that we can't simplify as we go with this thing. Got to get all the way down to the end, and then we simplify. Are you with me on this stuff so far? All right. So to add some fractions, we have to have a common denominator. The denominator stays the same. We don't add them together. And lastly, we can't simplify until the last step. And what's nice about this, this is going to be exactly the same process for rational expressions. We do the same thing. It's just instead of having single numbers like these guys up here, we're going to have expressions. But it, it's basically the same thing. Let's take a look at a couple simple examples. We'll start building this up and moving this up, okay? So that's a rational expression. That's a rational expression. We're adding them together. In this case, we're not multiplying or dividing. Uh, tell me something. Are these going to be possible to add as they are right now? Yeah. What lets you know that? Great. That's our first little thing that we have to have. We have to have a common denominator. That's, that's a fact. We must have that to add some fractions together. We've got one here. So at the next step, what we're going to do, <coughs> we're going to write this as one fraction. And what we're going to do is do x plus 2x. I would like to see that step for now. We write things as one fraction first and then we add them in just a second. Uh, but do the step because it's going to help you later on. I'll show you that in just a minute. And down at the denominator, am I going to have 6 plus 2x? No. What is it going to be down there? Yeah, same thing. Lastly, we're going to look at the numerator and denominator and combine like terms if we can. Now the denominator, you're not going to have anything to combine because it does not change. But the numerator, you might. So up on the numerator, we have a 2x, and we have an x. How much does that give us? Yeah. 
And then you would look for anything to simplify. Can I simplify anything here? Okay, then I'm done in this case. I can't simplify like threes, that doesn't work. Or the x's, I can't do that either. Uh, so I'm done here. But here's the point where you would try to factor and simplify. Are we all good so far? Uh, I have a question on the, when you add x plus 2x, you don't add the x's? We do. You have one x here, you have two x's here, that makes three x's. You don't get an x squared, that would be multiplication. Is that what you're thinking of? Yes. Okay. Okay, let's try, uh, let's try a couple more. Does it work the same way for, with subtraction? Do I still need a common denominator here? Yeah. Uh, is this one okay? Do I have that? Mm -hmm. So we have exactly the same thing on the denominators. All we're going to do is write this as one fraction when you have those common denominators. So on our denominator, we'll have that 2x minus 5 still. That stays the same in all three parts. On the numerator, we'll have, how much is on the numerator? 2x minus 5. We try to combine like terms, but there's nothing to combine. How much is this? 1. Oh, that's interesting. We can actually still reduce like that, still simplify. So this gives us 1. Now, you're probably wondering why I have you do that step and this step. You're going to see on this next problem here. It's kind of an important one for you guys to get. This is really similar to one thing we've done in this class before, but I just want to refresh your memory on what you do on it. So first thing I'm going to ask, am I okay as far as the denominators go? Do I need to do any work with that? No. Uh, exact same thing. That's great. That's what we need for addition subtraction. The next step is we're going to write this as one fraction. You see, the thing about it is that a lot of people like to do the math in their head, right? Because here, I mean, it's very easy. You can look at this and go, oh, yeah, that's going to be 9 over 3. No problem whatsoever. They're single numbers. But here, what a lot of people do, they forget the fact that that fraction bar implies parentheses. They forget that. And so what they do here is they'll do something like 4x squared, that'd be great. They'll do the plus 7x. Do you see how I'm getting the plus 7x? They do that. But then they put a plus 15 at the very end. And that part right there, that's the mistake. You see, when we have these fractions, these expressions being subtracted, what's implied is there's, there's parentheses here and there's parentheses here. It goes around both those numerators specifically so that when we do this, when we do this, we're going to get, sure, something over x plus 3. But what it really means on the numerator is 4x squared plus 15x minus the entire expression 8x plus 15. And this is really the reason why I have you write things as one fraction, so that you see that first off. But then also, it changes things from a fraction problem into just a simplifying a polynomial problem. And we've done that before in this class. So it's nice. We get the numerator. We just look at that part. And we simplify for that. Are you starting to see that these parentheses are kind of important for us? Mm -hmm. That's going to distribute that negative. If not, you know what we did? I do this before. I look two places on a problem. I look where a mistake could happen. I look right here. And I'm going to look at the very, an the very end. If, you, if I look at the very end and you got it wrong, I'm going to look right here. I'm going to say, oh, they don't know what they're doing. Or they did, they just made a simple math error after that. Does that make sense to you? So that's a very important point for us. So let's see what happens after this. The 4x squared plus 15x, not a problem. But what we're going to get next, we know what happens with that parentheses and that minus. We're going to get minus 8x. Everybody's going to get that part. We just need to be able to get also the minus 15 there. That's going to change that sign inside those parentheses. Remember doing something like that? I think it was C.1 when we were distributing negatives. We, we made sure to get that. Over x plus 3. Now at this point, we couldn't simplify anywhere before. We're going to combine some like terms and see if we can simplify.
get that one to the pass around too. Okay. What's the next thing I do on this problem? Combine like terms. Okay, we oh, already combined like terms. Sorry. What's the next thing we do? Factor. Why are we going to try to factor? You're right. Why? Simplify. Yeah, that's right. It's the only way we can simplify, right? So we're back down to simplifying. Can you factor this one? No. no. Can you factor this one? Yes. Hey, you've done that before. We know how to do that. That's a diamond problem. Does it have the extra step or not? Yes. yes. Yeah, it sure does. And so this is going to be, well, we, we can do try to do it off the side if you'd like. Hopefully you got 7 and negative 60, yeah? Mm -hmm. I'm thinking somehow maybe 12 and 5 with this. Did you think about that also? 12 and 5, probably positive 12, negative 5, that adds to 7, that multiplies the negative 60. Yeah. Why didn't we factor the one up there? The X plus two X? We were actually able to just combine like terms with that. Uh, okay, And we did that here too, we combined like terms, but this is factorable. 3X is a single term, you can't factor that. Okay. Yeah, you're done there. We keep going on this thing. Do a little bit of factoring by grouping. Which we've seen this before, that's why I'm going quickly through this. We've done this a lot of times. We'll continue with this. And that's our new numerator. So what we're going to write Instead of the 4x squared plus 7x minus 15, we're going to write this expression. And we'll have x plus 3 times 4x minus 5 all over x plus 3. Now, can you tell me, does anything, well, that's cool. does anything simplify out of this expression? Great. So you see that we're, we're combining the idea of simplification even with addition and subtraction. It's just coming to the very end. With multiplication division, it was nice. We could do it as we go. But notice something. Look at the board with me. Could you have simplified this? No. no. This one? No. no. This one? Definitely not. This one? Well, you are. You're, you're combining like terms. And then at this point, you can't just start crossing stuff out. You've got to factor it. So you can't do that until the very last step. That's what kind of makes addition and subtraction a little bit harder. So you can't make it easier as you go. You make it tougher initially, and then you fix it later. So our final answer is the 4x minus 5. Okay, I'd like to give you one to try on your own. Let's see if you can do this. Be careful on the parentheses. Be careful on the common denominator. Let's see if we can work it all the way down. Are you ready for it? Yeah. 